Hello everybody, this is Leo Brady with TheMovieGuy.com. I am here with the amazing Lily Gladstone. I mean amazing. I am so excited to be here with you today. Uh, the star is rising for this one, people. Let's like, talk about it. Um, we're here to talk about her new film, Quantum Cowboys. Uh, Lily, talk about getting involved in this movie. Uh, you know, I, I want to bring up certain women and then now this. It's interesting because you, you <laughs> seem to be single-handedly changing even the style of Westerns and how uh, they're done. Thank you for saying yeah. that. I yeah. mean, that's been my only goal for <laughs> ever. No, I mean, like, I'm, it's funny. I'm happy to be just looking at John Ford's right, name right, <laughs> right there, there as you're saying it. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Western has just more than anything shaped how people view American Indians and that shapes like that shapes policy, that shapes um treatment. Yeah, everything. It's <laughs> yeah. um it's people who write the laws that affect our lives, people who are, are weighing in on tribal sovereignty on whether or not we get to raise our own kids. It's like they all watch those Ford Westerns. Right. So um it's it's really great to be at a period of time where a lot of filmmakers who are making such such as this guy <laughs> where you have filmmakers especially in the indie world who are so interested in um, not just deconstructing or reconstructing the western just like you know like Jeff said in the talk back earlier yeah. said this is um the West has always been made by, you know, somebody sitting in Spain or, you know, somebody who's really giving um, disenfranchised population po post-World War II a sense of, you know, we're the heroes, let's yeah. do the, the cowboy, like, winning the Wild West, and it's like, you know, what is, who is that erasing? Right. Um, and, you know, it's not just this, it's not just the story of who was here and who came, it's um, who came, what was brought with it, what is it that we're building together. Um, and one thing that really appealed to me about this is, one, Jeff also cast indigenous actors and not specifically indigenous roles, so right. he's already doing the work just by having us in it, yeah. playing these characters of placing us in this history without necessarily making us part of what his conversation is about colonism, yeah. colonialism, and, um, and the Wild West. It's a... Uh, Especially having Gary Farmer's character in there, who's yeah. just so iconic and is um, iconic in his own right, not just for natives in film. It's like, I mean, I grew up watching Gary and Pow Wow Highway first, so yeah. he's, he's like just a master. And also seeing his work with Jim Jarmusch, yeah. and like even Alex Cox, like he and Alex Cox were close, and it was cool to see them reunite in this. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, Gary, Gary getting to be. This, uh, this man coming in, dropping these little pearls of non sequitur wisdoms. Um, it's, it's important to have us be part of a landscape of storytelling and also to include other conversations about what colonialism is. I loved the little aside in there where, you know, we're already in a world where time and space are kind of malleable. Yeah. And then throw in throw in the um throw in the peyote trip on top of it <laughs> right, um, right. but having that moment where i really saw jeff's comment particularly about like the revisionist western yeah. um pulling out this moment of vietnam essentially yeah it's like yeah this black soldier shooting at this vietnamese woman and why are we doing this right. really it's like what other what other reason do we have to tell ourselves than these just stories it's yeah. just how it is it's not just how it is it's not just how it has to be yeah um yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and like, it's just like you, one thing is like amazing about it, and I talked to Jeff about it, is that like you step into onto the screen, and it, it feels like you are. I mean, well, you are the coolest cowboy out there. Like, <laughs> and I and like that was like the one thing that I was just like, right? You know, th th this is there's like a magnetism there, yes, but like at the same time too, like we're watching a western where. The coolest cowboy is the woman. Is the is you know what I mean? Is right. is the like real person that should be the coolest person on, in the <laughs> in the frame? And um, talk about even like sort of is that an effortless thing? I mean, honestly, is that an effortless <laughs> thing or is that just like 
just in the script. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, because no, he, I mean, he talked about like kind of merging Han Solo and Obi Wan in a way. I, I am quoting exactly. Yeah. I am quoting Jeff. That's yeah. um. He said both simultaneously Han Solo and Obi Wan referencing Wendy when we've talked about it. Yeah. And I mean, in in my view, Star Wars, especially those storylines, are westerns yes. as well. Yeah. Um, I kind of feel like, I mean. <laughs> That's really kind of you. <laughs> I don't know that it's effortless, but I wouldn't necessarily say that's what I'm aiming for. Yeah. It's, um, I know that Jeff, you know, like I spoke to, Jeff wrote these scenes with a tone, and they each have objectives. They each have clearly defined relationships. They may not have a timeline or even what some would call a plot. Right, right. <laughs> um, when you're looking at them fractured like that, there definitely is a plot and, like, an arc to this story, but when you're looking at them scene by scene and, like, plucking them out, it's, it's um, you're just trusting who's in front of you. Yeah. And really playing into those beats, like, um, I didn't walk into this film, like, thinking about it as being Obi-Wan, but just having that mystical sort of moment of, I didn't want to see you die again. Right. It's like, okay, there's this this woman and, like, the, her uh, cavalierness and just placing herself wherever in time she needs to be. Yeah. But also, like, it was, and then just kind of disappearing into the mist. It was like, okay, everybody wants that moment. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab that and I'm just gonna have fun with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, at one, two, uh, the the animation and working in like a atmosphere like this with rotoscope it, was this the first time you'd ever experienced something like that and can you sort of yeah. give a little detail about like what was that experience like yeah for sure um i was i was really excited knowing that and it's like some some of them were we knew we're gonna be in real time but i mean you can tell you can tell when you're gonna be animated because there's a green screen behind you right um but i kind of looked at it the same way that um i look at in a theater when you're performing with like a mask on or a yeah. puppet it's like the animation felt like it was going to be something that was that i was donning so i didn't know what it looked like but when you're doing mask training it's um you engage with the mask itself and then it really wears you it's like yeah. you fill in and inhabit that yeah. so knowing that these scenes were going to be animated and knowing that like walking into the lawyer's office to get the deed i knew there were going to be dead animals behind me slightly moving yeah like animate dead animals behind me right so i knew that that was going to be where a lot of the focus and the tone of the scene was going to be placed so just being in there and being as still as possible, which is always a gift for any actor on film. Yeah. Like, a lot of actors don't trust that, no, you being still is interesting enough. Yeah. Um, that being said, I also am just naturally kind of a cartoony person. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. when I'm doing, like, when I'm doing, like, Kelly Reichert, for example, yeah. um, working with Kelly, like, almost everything that you saw in Certain Women, there were takes that were, like, tuned up a little bit more. And just, like, more more expositional, more, um, I'm wearing way more of what's going on internally on my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm just one of those faces that I think something and it's, you can see it. Yeah, um, right. I so, <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of nice to have the liberation knowing that, and in, since this was animated, if I have a moment where I like raise my eyebrow, it's like, okay, somebody's going to have to draw that going up and I can lean into that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I can, I can feel the pace, I can feel the timing, I can, I can not... I don't have to worry about looking cartoony because I'm going to be a cartoon. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, yeah. In, in that way, it was really, it was really liberating. Yeah, I was going to say it must be, it must be a really fun exercise mm -hmm. and, and a like just great experience of an exercise as an actor. Totally. Um, and speaking of acting, I mean, I'm sure that yeah, you're going to get a hundred questions, so I'm just going to prepare you. Um, <laughs> the Killers of the Flower Moon is your next film with mm -hmm. Martin Scorsese. Um, being, you know. Now that you've finished that movie, right? I, I believe you've wrapped on that. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. For a bit. <laughs> okay. Uh, now that you've finished that movie, sort of, do you sort of, what kind of journey have you kind of taken from that, from the start of that film until now? <laughs> Great way of asking about yeah. the movie without asking about the movie. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but also acting, but also For asking sure. about like your sort of career. I mean, right? Sure. I mean, it's about to sort I of like, that. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, it was it was intimidating walking into something that was that. Yeah. I mean, those names, they're titans. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. um, I think Leo is maybe the last living true movie star. Yep. You know, because it doesn't happen that way for everybody anymore. Right. People don't watch films the way that they used to, so. Yeah. Um, so there was kind of the, 
the nervousness about all of that, you know. Yeah. Um, but really, when it got down to it, I said it in the talk back about how doing this green screen work felt a lot like, you know, you have a you have a trunk, you know, like black box theater. You just like, okay, what can I play with in here? Here's a scarf. Here's a hat. Here's a mustache. Here's like what I can pretend is this. Yeah. Um, and just pure creation. The um, I was so refreshed to find that working at that level with those established artists, like just rediscovering a truth that you know when you're a kid, when you're just doing it for the love of it, that right. it's about the story, it's about being as true to it as possible, um, it's about trying on the hat and saying it's this thing, and then everybody talking and collaborating <laughs> and making it that thing together. Yeah. And um, I mean, the difference was, you know, Marty decides he wants, like, I don't know, a cupcake and a shot that never happened but he's like right yeah it's um instead of it being like okay this little like you know foam thing we'll like pack it and it'll look like a cupcake and we'll treat it like a cupcake actually like a card of like 50 gourmet cupcakes rolls out for him to choose from that's the only difference i mean i've heard like i've heard the de niro story about like actual money being used on the set of like mean streets and like how right. they had to like that they at the end of the day they lost like <laughs> however how much money making it i mean it's like and and, and yeah. whether it's like just his style, it's like you can't. Sometimes you can't fake things, right? I guess that that's, right. Yeah. And that's I mean that is the difference. Is um, it's so lived in, it's so thought out. Like Marty, just he has a plan behind his plan behind his plan. When he walks on set, and this is one thing I've made him so masterful, and that I love, and I try to apply in my own life. Yeah. And kind of like why I think this film works, being as odd as it is, there's yeah. still bumpers on it. Right. Like, the creation, um, I, I forget the quote or where it comes from, but I, like, you know, read it in high school and thought it was great, and, yeah. like, you know, if I was a different person, would have gotten it tattooed on myself by now. <laughs> but, um, let, um, give control to your life and let art have your chaos. Yeah. And I kind of feel like, I don't know, working with Marty and just seeing how he is, he's so seasoned that he knows building the parameters and building the circle and then trusting what's inside of that and letting yeah. it just happen organically that's yeah. that's the only way to really get it yeah. and it's um when you're looking at like this trajectory or whatever i've got coming it's a very artificial feeling thing to walk into because you know it's lights camera action not in the good sense and right. you know the step and repeat like you know posing <laughs> sense yeah. but yeah it's talking about boundaries and parameters we uh, have a party to go yeah, <laughs> to right. go to and then get wild within. Right. But um Yeah. Yeah, it's uh trusting like being as prepared as you possibly can, but also knowing that you don't know what's next and that's where the magic happens. Like that's what working on set was like in this in this film, Quantum Cowboys with Jeff and working with Marty. Yeah. Um and just kind of something I've since then trying to been adopting to my own life a bit. It's mm -hmm. like prepare to a point where you're not gonna feel it lost right. um but prepare but now, to a point and then just enjoy yeah that's awesome all right lily gladstone thank you Leo. thank you so much it was nice fantastic to meet you, in you too yeah.